Give a little love yourself. Cure your greed. Purify your wealth. Look around at where you live. Look at all the good you have to give. Give a little love yourself. There's a hand somewhere to hold, a mouth to feed. There's so much that we can do for so many who are in need. Give our time, give our wealth, give our love, give ourselves. No one lost sees each and every hidden deed. Give a little love yourself. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to the Fiqh of Zakah. A series of programs where we look into detailed into Zakah, something which is the third pillar of Islam. We have over 30 eyes of the Qur'an speaking about this important topic, something that affects all of us. To help us go through this and expand upon this, we have with us Sheikh Muhammad Salah. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh, and welcome. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khairan jameel. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. Sheikh, in the previous episode, we went into the important topics of those people who receive the zakah. And we went into the first two, and if I'm correct, I'll put them in the right order this time, the fuqara, well, then the masakin. And you explained Correct. it was one of the poor and the other is a sub-sect or sub-category of the poor. Sub-group. Um, one question may come to mind, Sheikh, is you spoke about before that to receive you know, the poor, one of the characteristics is the one who doesn't even get to the nisab. No. Now, here's a question for you. If somebody gets to the nisab, but he himself, okay, may need zakah, is this actually something that ever happens at all, Sheikh? بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبيه ومصطفاه سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه وبعد uh, It is a matter of your needs and whether what you possess meet your basic needs or not You can have a person who has a building The building is uh, several hundred thousand He's renting them. And the rent that he collects, and he's surviving on the rent. He has many kids, some going to school here and there. His wife is sick, and uh, he has a lot of financial commitment. The rent that he collects does not even suffice his needs for 15 days of the month. Hmm. And the rest, he's in trouble. So while he has the nisab, he's eligible for the zakah. Hmm. Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, May Allah have mercy on him, said, you may find a person who have a cattle, camels or sheep, has, for instance, 40 sheep. And you know that the nisab for the sheep, 40, is mm -hmm. 40. Then he owes one sheep. But uh, the 40 sheep that he has, that he's living in a very tough conditions, either because of the many commitment that he has supporting big family, or because the prices are going skyrocket, mm -hmm. like nowadays. Government employees, yaki, government employees are struggling to live. And when I, when I look at it, sometimes I recline on my chair and I think about it. Rishwa is haram. It is definitely haram. Bribery. It's a major sin. Allahu rashi wal murtashi wal raish. Everyone who's involved in bribery is cursed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But it is a very difficult equation. It is impossible to imagine somebody uh, who is earning, official earning, and he does not perfect any job. He earns that much, and that much is not sufficient for him for three or four days of the entire month. So we're forcing people towards the haram. I'm not trying to justify their mm. misdoing. But what I'm saying is that we have to pay attention to those people because perhaps by assisting them from the zakah fund, they would avoid stretching their hands to the haram. So lacking behind in one area would lead to a disaster on the other area, and so on. It can be a professional, a doctor, a, a principal of a school, or a big sheikh, uh, or a manager of a company or a governmental business, and he's eligible for the zakah. He has a private dri uh, driver and a chauffeur that he's taking him to work. You know, the, the, his job uh, makes it uh, available for him. But out of all of that, his salary isn't enough for him to survive. So this person is eligible and entitled for the zakah fund. Okay, now we've gone through the 
fuqara and the masakeen. And I remember you going through eight categories. So what are the rest of these categories here? The ayah says, إِنَّمَا الصَّدَقَاتُ لِلْفُقَرَاءِ وَالْمَسَاكِينِ وَالْعَامِلِينَ عَلَيْهَا Let's take it one thing at a time. الْعَامِلُونَ mm-hmm. عَلَيْهَا are the government employees or the state employees who are in charge for uh, guarding the zakah, collecting the zakah and distributing the zakah. So the custodians of the zakah, the shepherds if the zakah is cattle and the clerks for the administration of the zakah. They are eligible for to take their salaries if they are appointed by the state or the emir or the imam. They are eligible to take their salaries from the zakah fund on reasonable basis with conditions. Those conditions do not include being poor. No. The zakah custodian or the clerks may be rich, but this is his job. So he will get paid from the zakah as well. But the conditions are number one that they should be Muslims. Because it's not permissible to give zakah to non Muslims. Yeah. Except in few mm. can, uh, cases that we'll discuss, inshallah, uh, very soon. Okay. And uh, second, not to be from the family of the Prophet, <laughs> because the Prophet's family are not eligible for the zakah. In one hadith, Al Muttalib ibn Rabi'ah ibn al Harith went along with Al Fadl ibn al Abbas, these are the Prophet's uh, cousins. Mm-hmm. They went to the Prophet, <laughs> and they said, Ya Rasulullah. We came to ask you to uh, ad- make us administer the zakah. Why? So that nusibu ma yusibu nas, people get paid, and so that's a, it's a job. So we wanted to uh, get also a share of that. Mm-hmm. So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّ الصَّدَقَةَ لَا تَنْبَغِي لِمُحَمَّدٍ وَلَا لِآلِ مُحَمَّدٍ إِنَّمَا هِيَ أَوْسَاخُ النَّاسِ that's a sound hadith. It is not permissible neither for Muhammad nor his family to receive the sadaqah, the mm. mandatory zakah, because it is the filth of people's wealth. The filth that comes out of people's wealth. If you remember from the very first uh, episode we spoke about a zakah or a sadaqah, it's a mean of purification. It purifies one's wealth. So this part of the zakah, did you zakah in one's wealth is evil if it stays there. So mm-hmm. when you take it out, it purifies your wealth. So the Nabi Sallallahu said, we're not allowed to take the filth that comes out of people's wealth. So if they're Muslims mm-hmm. and they're working appointed by the government or the state, if there is baytul mal, that collects the zakah fund and distribute it. So those people are eligible for uh, the zakah and they can definitely get paid uh, out of this zakah. In one hadith, which is narrated by Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu Allah, he said that, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا تحل الصدقة لغني الصدقة is not permissible, the mandatory zakah is not mm. permissible to be given to a rich person. Well, I thought you just mentioned a few minutes ago that we can give the salaries of the employees or the custodians, uh, administrators of the zakah from the zakah fund, mm. even if they're rich. But the hadith here says, لا تحل الصدقة لغني. But it also says, إلا لخمسة, except for five rich people. Mm-hmm. Number one, العاملين عليها. Okay. So the, who administer the zakah. Number two, a man who buys the sadaqah by his money. So we could lick the sadaqah somewhere mm-hmm. and maybe we give it to somebody. He doesn't want this particular money. We give the sheep to a poor person. So he sells it to a rich person. He wants the cash. That is permissible. So he has taken the particular sheep which was given as a sadaqah, but he did not take it for him as a sadaqah. He, he paid for it. That is permissible. A gharim, or a person who is burdened with a debt. So he may be rich or has an asab, but he has a big debt he cannot settle. So we give him from the zakah. A ghazim fi sabilillah. Those who do not get paid by the government and their mujahideen enrolled in the Muslim army as volunteers, they get paid from the zakah, even if they are rich. 
أو مسكين تصدق تصدق عليه منها فأهدى منها لغني or perhaps he give a sadaqa to a miskin mm-hmm. and this miskin takes it to somebody else and gives it to him as a gift and the person who's been given this as a gift is rich so that too is permissible these are the five cases where the sadaqa is lawful to end up in the hand of a rich person and it is just fine if you look you examine the five cases mm-hmm. it is not that we go to somebody uh, who's rich and give him the sadaqa there are reasons why it ended up in the hand of such and such person Okay, this is going to be the point. We're going to take a, a short break. Please do stay with us on the Fiqh of Zakah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Give a little of yourself. Cure your greed. Purify your wealth. We need to strive to know the ruling of the Sharia on a particular incident. Why scholars had to put a lot of effort trying to figure out how to give the ruling on such topics and issues. Islam tells you to look good, to smell good. The reason of the recession was the collaboration between insurance companies and the banks. Some scholars, though stated that it is permissible for you to insure because you're compelled to do this by the government by law but you're not allowed to benefit from the insurance policy That we can do for so many who are in need. Give our time, give our wealth, give our love, give ourselves. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to the Fiqh of Zakah. Just before the break, we discussed the third category, or shall we say, those people who are distributing or collecting, shall I say, the zakah on the, on the state, for the state. Now, Let's look at the next category, Sheikh, because this is one of the ones which I think many people may be new to. They may not really understand and something which needs to be looked at. Those people who their hearts okay, need to be brought closer to Islam. Explain what this category is, Sheikh. There is a fourth category of the zakah recipients according to verse number 60 of Surah At-Tawbah. إِنَّمَا الصَّدَقَاتُ لِلْفُقَرَاءِ وَالْمَسَاكِينِ وَالْعَامِلِينَ عَلَيْهَا وَالْمُؤَلَّفَةِ قُلُوبُهُمْ for reconciliation of hearts, mm-hmm. those whose hearts are to be uh, reconciled. In what sense? It could be Muslims who are living in remote areas on the borders between us and non-Muslim countries. And non-Muslims are working constantly on them in order to convert them, in order to bring them to their side. We have to pay attention to them. Nowadays, in today's world, we have seen in some Muslim countries their neighboring countries are working hard on the bad ones who are living on the borders, utilizing them to spy on the Muslims, to work for them. Why? Because the state have neglected them. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is very late for some countries to recognize that those are our citizens. Those are our fellow Muslims. We have to pay attention to them. We have to support them. They have no infrastructure. They have no education means. They have no. They don't have anything that we have in the city. So this is one type that we give them from the zakah in order to reconcile their hearts and tell them, you are of us and we are of you. We happen to be living far away, but you're protecting our borders. It could be new Muslims who just came to Islam and they, we show them good faith and we support them financially because the support is not just spiritual. Uh, repeatedly when somebody accepts Islam we travel all over the world when somebody accepts Islam we say takbir, Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar and then what's the next step now you need to do the following make sure you work in halal or in halal and you make sure you gotta do this and you gotta do that we give them a bunch of instructions say goodbye see you later that's not proper it's not befitting we have to support those people now you tell them that there is halal and haram, you cannot work in this, you have to work in that without uh, supporting them. Support is not just uh, spiritual. Financial support is very important. The missionaries, there are armies of missionaries mm-hmm. who work hard on converting people who are either Muslims or do not know whether they have a religion or not. 
particularly in Africa, in some parts of Asia, and so on. What do they do and how do they convert them? They do not build a church and teach them the Bible because I don't want to learn, I want to eat. So it's food in one hand, are you saying? And food in one hand, food or money or medicine, but in hospitals, oh, medicine, yeah. you know, finance. Then on the other hand, you give them the Bible. He is not concerned about the Bible. He is concerned about the hand which gives him the food. So whichever direction you want to direct him, you will direct him. And you, uh, maybe you're familiar with this very famous case where missionaries entered a village and they converted everybody. And they gave them food, built schools, the hospitals, they gave them money, started small projects. And when uh, there was a function celebrating their conversion and their, uh, they asked them if they needed anything. So they all said, yeah, we needed one thing to go for Hajj. <laughs> so basically, yeah, they may convert people, not convert their hearts, but they convert the outside of them. So their needs. Basically. They yeah. fulfill their needs. Mm -hmm. Why? Because there is negligence on the other hand. There are a lot of rich people who make billions of dollars out of selling oil. And the oil was found in, 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 in Allah's properties. It is the right uh, of the Muslims. There is a zakat you on that, right? Hmm. So it has to be directed to those people. So we find missionaries who have tons of help, private planes, flying hospitals, and uh, tremendous, tremendous financial uh, assets. And on the other hand, we're not doing nothing. So al muallafati qulubuhum in order to reconcile the hearts of those who may have converted, or they are on the edge or they do not know nothing about their deen, or on the borders, or non-Muslims who are thinking about Islam. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did that with uh, Safwan ibn Umayyah. After the conquest of Mecca, Safwan ibn Umayyah was one of the Meccan leaders, Meccan chiefs who opposed the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam repeatedly, and he was very harsh against Muslims. Similarly, Abu Sufyan and others, Al-Aqra ibn Habis, etc., how did the Nabi وسلم, reconcile their hearts? Hmm. He gave him safety for four months, according to the Quran said. And he started giving him gifts. So Fuan ibn Umayyah helped Muslims in their war against Hawazin and Thaqif in the Battle of Hunayn, and he was not a Muslim. He supported them with his weapons and armors and all of that, and he went with them while he was not a Muslim. Mm -hmm. But after four months, after what he has seen from the kind treatment of the Prophet ﷺ. He looks at the valley full of uh, camels. He likes it. So the Nabi ﷺ said, you like it? Yeah, it's all yours. Yours? How come? So when they recognize that Islam is a very generous religion, he said, Wallahi laqad a'tani Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa innahu la abghadu al-nasi ilay. Fama zala yu'tini hatta innahu la ahabu al-nasi ilay. So if one said that I, uh, I did not hate Anybody as much as I hated Muhammad. But his generosity, he kept giving me and giving me and giving me until I really loved him. Some people love will be developed in their hearts through showing them generosity. Hmm. In Arabic they say, تَزَوَّدْ بِالسَّخَاءِ فَإِنَّ كُلَّ عَيْبٍ يُغَطِّيهِ كَمَا قِيلَ السَّخَاءُ When you're generous to people, even if you have some faults and some drawbacks, people would ignore them, neglect them because you're generous. This is not called bribery. This is counter-attacking the effect or the attacks of uh, the non-Muslim party who are trying to convert Muslims or people, uh, pull people towards their side. So from the Zakat Fund, we are uh, permitted and mm -hmm. encouraged to support those who are in yeah. need to reconcile mm -hmm. their hearts. This is in brief with regards to al muallafati qulubu. So let's ask you a bit of a contemporary question around this, Sheikh, if possible. Um, would you recommend then, so people who are giving zakah, because like you said, we're now living in a state, or which is many of us, which is not run by the Khalifa or the Muslim empire, and thus they can take our money and distribute it. Mm -hmm. So you live in a non-Muslim land. Can you give to organizations that give da'wah now? Is this one of those? This is another category will be discussed in this episode, inshallah, right now, if we have time. But if you uh, want to ask uh, a question that is really related to the subject, mm. it will be whether 
can we now give to al mu'allafati qulubuhum or are there any mu'allafati qulubuhum mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. people whom trying to reconcile their hearts that's right abu hanifa and his school of thought hold the view that this category has been dropped so the categories of the recipients of the ka are only seven it's reduced to seven instead of eight why he said because once Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the ummah mighty and powerful and the truth prevailed, there is no need anymore to reconcile the hearts. If mm -hmm. you want to accept Islam, you accept it. If you want to remain in Islam, you remain. Mm -hmm. And we're not helping you unless if you're poor or eligible according to the other seven categories. That was his ishtihad. Believing that, Umar ibn Khattab has a precedence in this regard. Al-Aqra ibn Habis and others who uh, Abbas ibn Mardas, who used to take uh, from the Zakah fund at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu when he died, they went to Abu Bakr Sadiq, so he wrote them a letter, a letter to Baytul Mal, and they kept uh, cashing this uh, Zakah fund as Mu'allafati Qulubu. When Umar ibn al-Khattab came in power, and you know that during his era, Muslims have uh, overruled almost two-thirds of the world, have conquered the Byzantine Empire and the Persian Empire, so Muslims were uh, mighty power. Muslim state was a big state now. So they came to uh, Umar ibn Khattab with this uh, writing, with the recommendation letter. So he tore it and he said, listen, no fun for you unless if you're poor. You're not eligible for it. And if you want to remain in Islam, it's up to you. You don't want to. So he said, you're not eligible for it. And Abu Hanifa relied on that. While the Jumhu said this is a category that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated, it might not be available at some eras or times. It might be needed some other times. And Allah knows best what we see in Africa nowadays, especially mm -hmm. with, with, the, with the campaigns and the waves of campaigns of missionaries working on people to convert them. I think that we really need to consider that. And those people are uh, from al muallafati qulubuhum and they are entitled for the zakah based on this category. So just to recap again, we've got these categories. We had the fuqara, the masakin. Fuqara and masakin, a subgroup of al fuqara We had the people who work for the state. Amilina alayha wal muallafati qulubuhum for reconciliation of hearts. Jazakallah khair Sheikh for all your advice today and especially the expanding and explaining to us about these categories within Zakah. Until next time, I leave you with Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. There's a hand somewhere to hold, a mouth to feed There's so much that we can do for so many who are in need Give our time, give our wealth, give our love, give ourselves Know Allah sees each and every hidden deed